from FedEx Forum and the American Home Shield Studio. This is The Odds Couple on GrindCityMedia.com. Handicapping all the football action, here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Hello, good people. Welcome to The Odds Couple. Week zero, college football is finally underway. Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker with you, and we will get you set all season long for all of the college football action. We'll mix in a little NFL as well along the way, and we'll handicap all the games for you coming up here on The Odds Couple on a weekly basis. Hello, Lang. What's Happy up, Rob? football season. Why are we calling it week zero? I don't know. They do it in high school. so This ain't high school, man. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a big time. I know, I know. But it's, it's tough because next week is week one. Yeah. So you could either ha- just have a long week one. I guess. Or you come up with another name like week zero. Maybe like opening week, zero. week. How about opening week? Or what about like week quarter like week 120th or, i don't know what it is it is week one for florida it, there's games playing yes in Miami there are games like these played. teams are ready yes and we are going to get into those games coming up uh, here on the program today also because there are only a couple of games here in week one, one zero, zero. <laughs> we'll call it zero and because of that uh we will also look at some of the preseason prognostications on uh over unders on number of wins we also will have some of our picks for uh over unders on the season we'll also have pick for the game between florida and miami this week so we'll be doing that uh we also got a guest on that will join us each and every week lance taylor from the round table in wjox in birmingham he will be joining us uh, on the program as well get his thoughts on the action each and every week today get his thoughts on some of the over unders for the upcoming season as well so we get into a season and all the talk again about the two teams that were there last year yeah, it's like a bottleneck at the top of everything, and and for the time being, I don't know how it's going to change. You know, it's a, Alabama's there, Clemson's there. I, I wrote this week for Grand City Media about Nick Saban and how he showed up to Alabama. And you know, every coach gets to a, to a team and they're like, "We're going to put in our culture and we're going to change things." And it, you know what? What if it works? Like right. this is a, this is the best case scenario. It's worked. They've been to four of the last eight championship games. Uh, I mean, they've won four of the last eight championships. Um, They've been awesome since he's been there, and as long as he's there, I don't see it changing. And Dabo Swinney seems to be pretty comfortable at Clemson. They're they're keeping the assistant coaches, keeping players. Like, I, it feels like these two teams are going to be there for a while, and somebody else has got to figure out a way to get up there and compete against them. Wasn't long ago, Dabo Swinney wasn't that guy. People remember Clemsoning yeah. was an actual term yeah. that we used in college football, but not any longer. Clemson favored again in every game this season. Dabo Sweeney, head coach of the Clemson Tigers, talks about getting ready for the season. You know, Abraham Lincoln, I think, said, if you, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'm going to spend the first four sharpening the blade. And uh, that's kind of that's really what it's about in football uh, because you spend so much time preparing. And this team has put a lot of work in, kind of sharpening the blade, if you will. And, uh, you know, now it's time to get out there and, and, and put the work in. Abraham Lincoln said that. You know Abraham Lincoln was an SEC guy. He had to be. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, honest Abe. <laughs> Absolutely. You know was. he was. I, I think that, you know, what What he's saying is he puts in the work and it's going to play off down the road whatever. I mean, look, they're, they're over-unders 11 and a half this year. They, they play 12 games. There's no room for error. None, though, right? zero. Like, you lose one, you're done. They've got a couple of games that are tougher than I think. They don't have, like, a cupcake off – um, outside the ACC schedule. they got to play South Carolina. Um, I don't know if they're going to run the table. Do you think they are? You'd think. I mean, they're going to be favored by double digits in every game that they play. They're 9-4 yeah. to four to win the college football championship. Not just to get to the playoff or win mean, the play, to win the whole thing. 9-4 to four and 11.5 and being that total. I'm, it, I think it would take more guts to bet the under. The game that scares me for them is the Texas A&M game week two. I mean, I know they're going to be a 17-and-a-half point favorite right now, but yeah. Texas A&M last year gave them a, a handful. I think they ended up At winning. At College by, Station. Yeah. So is that enough to swing at 15 points? Was it a two-point win last year? Right. A three-point win? So I, I don't know, but that to me is – that's a – Pretty tough opening game there to, you know, week two of the season. Alabama in the same boat. Their over under total is 11 this season, but they're coming off a loss, a loss of which was the worst under Nick Saban 
in Tuscaloosa. In fact, the only time that they've lost by 14 or more points was the national championship game last season. Here's Nick Saban on what Bama learned from losing the title game. Our players learned a lot from that experience. Uh, I think that um, we didn't play with the discipline at the end of the season that we'd like to have as a team. Uh, I don't think that our preparation um, so that we could win a game and be very responsible and accountable to do our job at a high level on a consistent basis uh, was what it needed to be. And, um, you know, whether or not people were worried about personal outcomes more than they were team outcomes, uh, it's always hard to judge that. But it seems like we had a lot of distractions at the end of the year. Not much credit given to Clemson for what they were able to accomplish in destroying Alabama in that football game. What were the distractions at the end of the year? I don't remember those. Like but Guys going pro, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess Clemson didn't have that problem with all their, off their defensive right. line going pro. I mean, look, it, there's a lot of excuses you hear thrown around, but Alabama got their butt kicked by Clemson in that championship game. I wonder if that gives Nick Saban, like, you know, he's been on cruise control for a while, like like his pontoon boat on Lake Burton. I wonder if that gives him a little bit of, like, motivation now to kind of get this thing going a little bit. I mean, he brought in Mike Tyson to talk to the team. Right. We saw that in the preseason. They're kind of in the same boat as Clemson. They're over under 11. Um, you can lose one game, I guess. And I mean, you push. They, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and their, their schedule, it's an SEC schedule, but, I mean, they're home against LSU. Um, home against Tennessee, and then on the road, the tough one's going to be at Texas A&M, I think, or at the Auburn, the Iron Bowl. So it's not the easiest schedule in the world, but it's Alabama, right? It's very manageable for them. I mean, with the tough games, the toughest one being at College Station. But, um, you know, Texas A&M could say a lot about this year's national championship game. Uh, With their total at 11, Clemson at 11.5, I think the bold thing would be to pick both under, but you combine those two. You take two teams in the country, Clemson yeah. and Alabama, 22 and a half the over under on 24 games. Yeah. That's crazy to say it would go over. But it's plausible, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you, yeah, they'll be favored in every game. I think Clemson definitely, for them, I think that's a much more likely scenario. Um, I mean, the thing with Alabama is that SEC schedule and you got heavyweights week after week after week. Um, I guess the question with Alabama might be quarterback depth because last year they could turn to Jalen Hurts, and this year they're going to turn to somebody who's not as polished or tested as Hurts. So, I, but I feel like you're basically betting on Saban and and Dabo. And at this point, like I mean, if you're not going to bet on them, who are you going to bet on? To me, that's the one thing that scares me about Alabama, and probably I'm with you. I think I would take Clemson's over before I would Alabama's because I'm not convinced that two is not soft. Yeah, he's been in the tent way too often yeah. for me. Now, last year when they played the first half and most of the games for the entire season, but yeah. he was still in the tent too often. We saw him in the tent in the conference championship game where he really got hurt, but yeah. he he's just in there for too many soft – missed the Manning Passing Academy this offseason because of some wow. little injury. I mean, it's just something always seems to be nagging. Yeah, I mean, but it's probably going to be the same scenario where he only has to play half the games, yeah. you know, <laughs> throughout most of this thing. And, um, and again, you know, when he got hurt in that conference championship game, he got stepped on. Like, it wasn't his fault necessarily, so – I, I, I'm going to trust Saban. Yeah, you look at those odds, 9-4 to four for Clemson to win the college football playoff, 5-2 to two for Alabama to win the college football playoff. Someone tells me that means Clemson and Alabama combined 60% chance to win yeah. the college football national championship. There are only eight total teams, including those two, that have an over 2% chance to win, the other six being Georgia, Michigan, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Texas, and LSU. I, and of those teams, I mean, I think Georgia has got to be at the head of the pack. Um, oh, also interesting, Texas A&M plays Georgia, Alabama, and Clemson. That's so they right. play the top three teams And right LSU. Now. Yeah. So, um, But I, I think Georgia's at the head of the list of those teams. And, and look, Georgia's had the lead against Alabama in the fourth quarter two years in a row and blew it. So they've been there. Now can they get over the hump? And I'm, you know, as a Georgia guy, I'm a little worried. I don't, I don't know that this is a better team than we've had the last couple of years. I think – Especially, we don't have the depth in the backfield. Top five wide receivers are gone from last year. Um, a lot of the defensive guys are gone from a year ago. The only good thing is we got rid of the offensive coordinator, Cheney, got him off to Tennessee. So um, we'll see if Coley is better. I don't know if he could really do much worse. Right. <laughs> but I feel good about it. I feel good about Georgia like having the pieces there. And 
Kirby's kind of got this thing rolling now, and maybe they can just kind of perpetuate what they started. Although Georgia, their number also at 10, 10 and a half, yeah. wherever you get it, and that's a, that's a huge number for them. And I look at Georgia's schedule, and I think that's even more favorable with one slip-up being possible, and that being the cocktail party. Yeah, I mean, they, they have Notre Dame this year too, but that's at, at home. home. So um, I feel pretty good about Georgia's schedule. They, for them, it's considering what they've had the last couple of years, this is a relatively easier schedule. Um you know, they do have Auburn at the end of the year and Texas A&M at the end of the year. Um, but other than that, it's, it starts off pretty easy, and I think they, they could easily beat that. Who else in the SEC can contend in the SEC, contend yeah. to take out Alabama? I like LSU. Um, I mean, they're in the same half as, as Alabama. They're in the West. But, um, I mean, who's going to go against Coach O and, uh, and those guys? And, look, they, they, they always have a good running game. Burrow is back. Um, they have a really good uh, backfield on the defensive side. I, I, I think they, they're a team that every year we kind of underestimate them a little bit, and they and they manage to produce, and I think this year might be the year it all clicks for them. Eight or more wins in nine, 19 consecutive years yeah. for LSU. Yeah. That's what, remarkable. What about you? You got a team you, you got your eye on? Well, I think, the, I think another team in there, Georgia for sure. Uh, LSU, I guess, in the West would be the one team that maybe I'd give yeah. them the closest shot, although I don't really give them a shot. I think Alabama's alone on an island in the West. But for anybody in the East, it's either Georgia or, to me, I think it's the Florida Gators. I'm yeah. really high on Florida this year. I think what Dan Mullen did with – what I thought was a garbage quarterback <laughs> was quite remarkable in Felipe Franks last year. Yeah. His numbers were incredible. And I think one more year under Mullen, that whole team one more year under Mullen, I like their defense. I love their skill position guys. And that, that game against Georgia every year, it, it's one of those rivalry games that weird yeah. things can happen. So to me, I think Florida, they have the opportunity – to, to really have it come down to that one game because then they could still afford another loss, yeah. whether that's LSU in Baton Rouge. And if that's the case, you know, you beat Georgia, you win the SEC East, it at least gives you a shot against Alabama. I, I would think Georgia has the best shot against Alabama only because they've been there already. They, they've, seen, yeah. they've seen what it takes. They have also have the you know, confidence that they can get a lead yeah. on them and play with them, whereas Florida would be in that situation for the first time. Yeah, I mean, you talked about Franks, and you know, as a freshman, nine TDs, eight interceptions last year, twenty-four TDs, six picks. I mean, that's quite a turnaround. Yeah. I, the one thing about Florida to me is Mullen has been playing with McElwain's guys for the most part. You know, until you, you it's the biggest trope in college football is like, oh well, this guy's got to recruit his his guys. He got to get his kind of players in there. Well, Florida's got his kind of guys in there now. Although the a bunch of them are defecting, it seems like the last couple of weeks. But sure. Florida's getting a lot of these guys in there now that are going to be the type of players that Mullen wants to use in his system. I think once Franks now has some confidence and he knows he's not going to get yanked out of these games, like this is his team now, we'll see how far he can go. I, I just wonder if a team like a South Carolina or a, a Missouri is the other team in the, that I think could yeah. surprise some people and, and just cause problems for someone else. Because like you said, Florida beats Georgia, it seems like, oh, well, you're, that, you're home free to win the East. But – Maybe not. Maybe there's one of these other teams that's going to surprise some people. Yeah, Mizzou could uh, have some problems for people this year for sure. All right, we'll talk about Florida Gators, and we'll talk more about the Florida matchup with Miami this weekend uh, coming up with Lance Taylor in our next segment. But I believe we're supposed to hear from Vinny Verno. Uh, you know Vinny Verno? He's on the Chris Vernon show. I've heard of him. Yeah, he makes appearances. He's supposed to make appearances. Uh, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Vinny Verno. You want to have a seat? It's a dad bod couple. I make picks, you make money. I make picks, you make money. Did you, did you call us the dad bods yeah, couple? Yeah, the dad look like I'm talking to two uh, sacks of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny Verno. Just got done gentlemen. 90% over the summer. If you subscribed to my uh, whatever they call the thing, what do you call the number, and I give you the picks. If you subscribe to that, I just got done hitting 90%, but now college football is back. Don't have a lot because it's only one game this weekend, but I do have one to wet your palate. <laughs> Both of you wet dry it. palates. Both of you look like your palates are dry. Got a dry Need a palate. little yeah. wetting. Yeah. yeah. So we got one. Could do some wet. The Heisman Trophy is going to be awarded at the end of the year. Yeah. And this is the easiest way to make money the entire year. And you may say, Vinny Verno, how is that possible? And I say, because I'm about to tell you who's going to win. I make picks, you make money, I make picks. 
you make money. Let's do it. The winner of the Heisman Trophy will not be Tuga Tuga Gagaloba. Right, who's, Alabama who's dad, dad is like beating him with bamboo every time he throws an uh, incompletion over the summer. <laughs> it ain't going to be Joey Lawrence, that chick at uh, Clemson. It ain't going to be her. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. It will be one man. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of John Wayne, Clint Eastwood. Great Sam Ellinger. Great Texans. Sam Ellinger. He's plus 1,500 to win the Heisman Trophy. This means if we put 100 grand on it, which is one <laughs> unit, you make like 1.5 billion, something like that. Sam Ellinger. Sam Ellinger. The Heisman Trophy this year will be awarded to the quarterback at the University of Texas, Sam Patrick. I don't know if that's his middle name. <laughs> Sam Ellinger, plus 1,500. We're putting 100,000 down to make 1.5 billion. One and oh, one and oh, one and oh. You're welcome, you're welcome. Dry palate number one, dry palate number two. Glamour shots, sacks of potatoes. Benny Verno is here. You're welcome. Fifteen hundred dollars times a million is one point five billion. <laughs> Sam Ellinger Heisman Trophy. You're welcome. Wow, and we'll be getting this all year from Vinny Verno. If you love knowledge, if Just straight knowledge, we are lucky. If the checks cash, <laughs> this place is cheap. Oh. <laughs> Holy so, mackerel. So. What is he doing over there? Oh, my God, it's three sacks of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. The, it's the dad bod trio. So, so no to uh, no Joey Lawrence. No. All on Sam. Tuga Baga Loba. He's all in. Ellinger. Yeah. Do okay. so you have Texas as a favorite or just, just Sam as a Heisman? Oh, you wanted two picks. I'm just ask him. You get one pick. <laughs> one pick. One pick. One pick. One and oh. One and oh. One and oh. Figured I'd try. Good, good effort. Good job, Lang. Vinny Verno. This guy. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. What? Unbelievable to have you yeah, come in for this. For the, the, just yeah, this one I pick. I know. You're welcome. Where are you going now? Huh? Where are you heading now? I, I didn't know that this was going to be question and answer. <laughs> Well, 60 minutes action. I gave you a pick. You win we, the pick. We make money. You can get a new shirt. Appreciate it. <laughs> you need one. <laughs> you too. Thanks, Vinny <laughs> Verno. We appreciate it. Bunch of poor. The poor great. Guys, poor guys doing this show. The great Vinny Verno will be joining us here Ow, damn. on the Odds Cup. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are lucky. getting sued. You want to talk about? <laughs> you want to talk about getting sued? Hook them! I, I just did the shock on accident. Hook them! <laughs> <laughs> we'll take Heisman Trophy game of the year. <laughs> we'll take a break here on the Odds Couple. We'll come back. Lance Taylor joins us when we return. Fish and Lang with you. We're back after this. Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. Saturday, October 5th, FedEx Forum, with special guests no, Brothers Osborne no, and Kendall Marvel. Chris Stapleton. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Tennessee was Join up, Grizz Nation. Pick up the best seats at the best prices to see your Grizz face the Lakers, Warriors, and more with Grizzlies 2019-20 season tickets. MVP season ticket members get exclusive access to events, seat upgrades, discounts on gear, and more. 
Tickets start at $9 per game. Call 901-888-HOOP or click grizzlies.com to purchase your seats today. In the new Memphis, generosity comes naturally. Did you know that Memphis logs 29 million hours volunteered every year? There's a lot to celebrate about the city, and what better way to do it than at Exposure? Come celebrate all things Memphis at Exposure at the FedEx Forum, brought to you by New Memphis. Meet over 150 organizations, businesses, and hidden Memphis gems to find fresh ways to get involved in your great city. Enjoy live performances, local celebrity games, and more. The whole city is invited this free event sponsored by iBank August 29th at the FedEx Forum from 6 to 8 p.m. Visit ExposureMemphis.com for more details. Backstreet Boys Witness the unrivaled energy live the DNA World Tour FedEx Forum August 27th plus surprise special guest Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Do not miss the Backstreet Boys experience. The new album DNA drops January 25th. Backstreet Boys live. Welcome back to GrindCityMedia.com. Live from FedEx Forum and the American Home Shield Studio. Now, here's more of The Odds Couple, Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. We welcome you back to The Odds Couple. Fish and Lang are with you here today. We will have our picks coming up a little bit later on, our preseason predictions for both the SEC and the Memphis Tigers. Also, uh, we'll have some picks for the week, uh, yeah. including a couple of uh, week season-long zero. picks. <laughs> week here in week zero. That's right. Week zero, though, does have games. That's right. A couple of games on the slate this weekend, including the Florida Gators, seven and a half point favorite against the Miami Hurricanes. Dan Mullen, head coach of the Florida Gators, talking about opening with the Canes. I think it's huge. You know, I mean, there's a lot that goes into that game. We're, the, we're you know, we're the, the opening game of the 150th year of college football, so it's a great honor to be just even be involved in that game. And it's going to be a huge, you know, kind of catapult for one of the teams, whoever wins that game, into really kicking off the season on the right note with a big win and a big game on, on uh, with a lot of national exposure. So that, that's a big game for us. It's a it's a Excited to be a part of it, and I know our players are excited to play in it. Yeah, it'll be played in Orlando, and joining us now to talk about that one and to talk about the upcoming season from the round table on WJOX in Birmingham. He's on Twitter at the Lance Taylor, and you can get his picks at Lance'sLock.com. Lance Taylor joins us here on the Odds Couple. Hello, Lance. Hey, Rob and Lang. Appreciate you guys uh, having me on. Look forward to this season. Yeah, looking forward to Week Zero. Absolutely, <laughs> we're looking forward to it too. Happy football season! It, it's it's nice to have games here. This talking season stuff's finally over. Yeah, and we normally have a rat game, but I agree with you guys. I think Florida Miami. I mean, that, that's a juicy one. We hadn't seen those two play since 2013, and obviously Manny Diaz in his first game as a head coach uh, against Dan Mullen in year two. And I don't know how you guys feel about Dan Mullen. I mean, I witnessed uh, what seemed impossible, what he was able to do in Starkville with Mississippi State, getting them to number one in the month of November uh, just three years ago. Now he takes over a Florida program, ten wins in year one, and. You know, year two is normally that special year for elite coaches, and if you believe Dan Mullen has the uh, opportunity to be an elite coach or is an elite coach, uh, this could this could be an interesting year. And I just keep looking at the fact, and I've already brought it up a couple times today, Felipe Franks, what he did last year, to me, that, that's a remarkable job by Dan Mullen. Hasn't thrown a pick in his last five games, and just for him to be able to throw the number of touchdowns that he did a year ago was remarkable, considering the year before that, it looked like Florida didn't have a quarterback. Yeah, I agree. You know, I thought, you know, the, the, the conversation a year ago right now with the Florida Gators was who is going to ultimately be the starting quarterback. Will it be Franks or will it be Emory Jones? And most people believe, well, Emory Jones is coming in fresh with Dan Mullen, and that's going to be the quarterback of the future. The progressions that Felipe Franks made down the stretch, and you mentioned in the last five games, to not throw a pick and to completely dominate Florida State and, and then to go into that bowl and do what they did the Peach Bowl against Michigan. I mean, Franks looked the part of a franchise quarterback, and I think that's all about the tutelage of Dan Mullen and his ability and what he does with quarterbacks. And I'm really fascinated to see another step that maybe Franks has taken in the offseason in year two under Dan Mullen. So we're talking so much about Dan Mullen and Franks and Florida, and, all, and it's a seven-and-a-half-point line. Like, is this – people believing that Manny Diaz has something going on Miami or do we still not quite trust Florida yet? Yeah, I don't think we trust Florida yet. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that win total will drop from 10 wins to maybe seven or eight this year. 
Um, so I think a lot of people think it was smoke and mirrors last year. Right. You know, on the other side, when you look at Miami, I don't know how much we trust them. Defensively, Manny Diaz has always got the defense dialed in. Uh, but offensively, you know, you've got a, a, a redshirt freshman in Jaron Williams, a guy that nobody believed would be the starting quarterback, already in starting quarterback two weeks ago. I think most people believed it would be Nikochi Perry or Tate Martell. And so for them to have a, a guy that's, you know, gotten three uh, career attempts to be the starting quarterback for Miami, um, I think there's big question marks there. And to be honest with you, I think seven and a half is kind of a heavy, heavy number when you look at how good defensively Miami is. Hmm. When, when you look at that quarterback situation for Miami, how much does that go into making a pick for this week? Well, I think a lot because he's got a ton of experience, obviously, with Felipe Franks. And this Florida defense, you know, Todd Grantham's had them dialed in. I mean, they only gave up 20 points per game last year. So you've still got a lot of – you've got eight returning starters on the defensive side. Uh, they're going to be very aggressive against not only uh, a redshirt freshman quarterback, but also a true freshman left tackle and a redshirt freshman right tackle. Right. Everybody talks about, you know, if there's a weak link on this Florida Gator team, it's their offensive line. Well, look at Miami's offensive line. I mean, starting a, a true freshman left tackle, um, you know, to me, that's that's a big question mark as well. So are we liking the Gators this week? Yeah, I'm leaning the Gators. You know, I think, and you guys will, will learn this about me, I'm a big-time contrarian. I think the money's pretty split on this. Um, it's crept up. It opened at 7. It's gone to 7.5. Um, right now, I'm leaning playing Florida minus the 7.5. And, and it seems like the public's all over this under and it does seem a game that would play under, but 47 is a light total in college football. Yeah. So probably staying away from the total right now. If I had to play a total, I probably would play over, but, but I'm feeling pretty good about Florida. If there was a total of penalties, I think <laughs> over might be the play there. Yeah, we'll, if, we'll, we'll just set that at, uh, I don't even know what a good number would be. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No matter what it is, we'll take yeah, the over. Yeah, take the over there. Uh, speaking of overs, uh, overs and unders in the SEC this year, what's one that stands out for you uh, going either way? Well, you know, everybody talks about Missouri and what a joke schedule the Tigers have this year. And, you know, there is an opportunity when you start to really look at the schedule. Uh, they realistically could open 8-0 as they go into a bye week before they take on Georgia and Athens. They're going to be favored at least, I would say, seven of those games. Uh, the one game they might not be favored in would be at Kentucky October 26th. They'll be favored in their first seven games for sure, though. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody's taking a look at that. Um, I'm not sure. Right now, I've got Missouri penciled in right at eight wins. And I think that total's sitting at seven and a half. So, you know, I think it's pretty close to where it needs to be. Um, you know, Auburn to me is kind of fascinating when you look at how, on the opposite side of Missouri, Missouri's schedule, how difficult their schedule is. Um, you know, this is one of those years where Auburn's so unpredictable, it seems like every year under Gus Malzahn, that they've got the talent where they could win nine games, even with a true freshman quarterback in Bo Nix. But at the same time, they could go six and six. Yeah. So I think I would lean Auburn's under. Um, I think seven is probably the number for those guys. And Tennessee's become a trendy pick. And I, I don't know how you guys feel about Tennessee and Jeremy Pruitt in year two. Um, but, you know, I think they've got the talent to win seven or eight games. Uh, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure about Pruitt. Um, I know he's done a, a better job of building that culture. And, you know, there were moments last year, and they've got 16 returning starters, and Garantano, when you start to really break down the numbers, wasn't a bad quarterback. You know, he's got a lot of potential. Um, I think most people are leaning over with Tennessee right now. I think one of the more remarkable schedules in college football this year is Texas A&M. Yeah. And maybe your gap between how many they could win. I, I think they, they could win as many as nine. They could win as many as six this year. And that over-under is right there in the middle at seven and a half. They could have a really good season but have fewer wins than they had a year ago. Yeah, Rob, here's what I would do with A&M. You know, another coach in year two, one of the four active coaches that's won a national championship in Jimbo Fisher and getting paid a ton of money, $75 million contract, coming off nine wins last year. You look at games that they're definitely not going to be favored in. At Clemson in week two, they've got to play Bama at home. They'll definitely be a double-digit dog there. They're going to be uh, a, a healthy dog at Georgia, and then they'll be a dog at LSU. So if they can steal one of those games, you know, I, I think they go over the total. If you don't think they do, they probably don't because there's going to be one of those other games they're probably pissed off. Um, you know, I, I kind of lean that he steals one of those games. He needs to with the money he's making, and I know those are all difficult <laughs> games, but I, I lean he steals one. I'll say they win at LSU, and I, I think they get to the eight-win mark. 
South Carolina is another one of those teams where Will Muschamp says it's the best team that he's had since he's been at South Carolina, yeah. but the results might not show it. You know, last year I got burnt on South Carolina. I played, you know, I, I, I thought it was a team that could win nine or ten games, and they go seven and six. And you start to look at Will Muschamp going into year four, and, you know, you've got a quarterback in Jake Bentley that seemed to have a ton of potential and just turns the football over way too much. But when you look at Bentley's years, nine wins, seven wins, last year – uh, seven wins. If if they win less than seven games this year, it seems like Jake Bentley, that arrow is a complete waste. Yeah. But when you start to look at the schedule, you know, when you got to play Alabama at Missouri, those are just games in September. You got to go to Georgia, Florida at Tennessee, at A&M Clemson. I mean, six and six almost seems to be a stretch. So if you're a South Carolina fan, if you're being realistic, just getting back to a bowl with that brutal schedule, um, it might be a win. Wow. I was looking this morning on strength of schedule. South Carolina is number one, not in the SEC, in the country. Toughest schedule in the country. Hey, Lance, looking a little more locally here in Memphis. Everybody's fired up. They're favored in every game they play this season, open against Ole Miss. Uh, they're over under right now is nine and a half. How, how do you feel about the Tigers? Yeah, I'd probably play that over, Lang. I mean, just based on the fact that you said it, I mean, they yeah. could realistically be favored in all 12 games. You know, ultimately, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be the case because when you start to look at the schedule, it's a little more difficult when you talk about, uh, you know, depending on how good Temple's going to be, that's a game on the road yeah. at Houston, at South Florida, and then Cincinnati to end it. I think they dropped two games. I think 10-2, and two, though, in year four for Mike Norville's really good year. Yeah. Um, obviously, you got experience with Brady White. They're going to miss Daryl Henderson, who's obviously now with the Rams. Uh, but I still think Memphis has a really good year, and they've got every opportunity to win the AAC. But I think that's, that's kind of a low team total total wins for, like you said, a team that could be favored in 12 games. I mean, I saw there's going to be seven teams, at least right now on paper, that will be favored in all 12 games if Memphis was one of them. Well, and we'll talk more about that uh, Ole Miss-Memphis game next week, but uh, it's interesting that first game between those two teams really could determine the over-under for either one of them. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. That's a huge swing game on team total, and, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those games for, for Matt Luke before you get into conference play. If you want to, you know, think about keeping your job, I mean, I think six and six probably the number that would maybe keep him around Oxford. You lose that game, and it's going to be tough to get six wins and get bowl eligible. Lance, tell us about Lance's Lock.com. What can folks get when they go there? Yeah, real simple. Uh, right now, and I try to be fully transparent, baseball in July has been tough rolling into August. Uh, we're getting everything lined up, though. Uh, preseason's been great. And we've got everything. we got every league, every lock, every day. We do Major League Baseball. We do the NBA. We do college basketball. Obviously, our bread and butter is college football and the NFL. And uh, it's, right, it's right at 3 bucks a day. It's $90 a month. You just go to lanceslock.com. Check it out. Uh, this is our fifth year of operation, though, and looking forward to a really successful year five. Awesome. Well, Lance, we look forward to visiting with you uh, each week here on The Odds Couple. We'll do it again next week. Enjoy week zero. Yeah, you too. I appreciate it, Robin Lane. Talk to you guys next week. Thanks, Thanks, Lance. Lance Lance Taylor joining us from the Roundtable, host of the Roundtable on WJOX in Birmingham, also on Twitter, at the Lance Taylor. And don't forget to check out Lance'sLock.com. Some of those toughest teams to predict uh, include Texas A&M. Auburn's another one. And this first game with Auburn could really determine a lot. And with the freshmen starting, you know, over the guys who have been there a year, been in the system a little more. I, I guess that, you know, Stidham was there kind of wasn't able to run as much as, as Gus wants him to run. The thing with Auburn that I was thinking about last night was, you know, when Malzahn got there, they were a team that ran, did this run pass option and it was new and no one in – now everybody does this. Right. They, they're not they're not on the cutting edge anymore. They, they, they seem like a team that other teams aren't going to be as taken off guard to have to play against as they were in the past. We'll see. I, looking at pictures of Knicks, he does not look like a freshman. Just photos of him today on Twitter. Like, I mean, it looks like he's in his mid twenties. Yeah. He's jacked. So it looks like he's going to be able to handle the the pounding he's going to take in the SEC. But like you said, I mean, they open against Oregon, and then they Tulane, Kent State, then Texas A and M. They got to play Florida and Gainesville, um, LSU and Baton Rouge. Uh, got to play Georgia at the end of the year, Alabama at the end of the year. It's a tough schedule. And I don't know if they're going to be able to keep just stringing wins together throughout all that. They could be anywhere between nine wins or yeah. six wins, which Gus would be gone if it's six yeah. wins. I don't know. You think so? They're paying him a if lot it's of money. Six, yeah. Yeah. Seven, I think it depends how you get to seven. Eight, probably depends how you get to eight. I think he stays if it's eight. I, but six, I don't think there's a chance he's there. 
I, they were ready to move on from him last year. Yeah, year one of his contract. Yeah, extension. which yeah. was a much bigger buyout than yeah, it is now, totally. and it's still huge. Uh, Gus, however, the one thing Gus Malzahn says is they've got a shot. The same characteristics that those championship teams had, and that's what's exciting for me. Now you got to win close games. You, you got to make plays when the games on the line. You got to stay healthy. But I can tell you today, the exciting thing for me, like I tell my team, we got a chance. And uh, not every team in our league can say that. So, real exciting times as far as that goes, and really looking forward to coaching uh, this team this year. You know who else said, so you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> Lloyd Christmas. <laughs> Didn't work out so well. No, no, it did not. Uh, Gus, yeah, he goes into this year, and that first game will tell a lot whether or not Gus starts the season on the hot yeah. seat or not. Here's a nugget for you. Bo Nix, named yeah. the starting quarterback at Auburn. Shortest named SEC starting go. quarterback since? Uh, I'm thinking Pat somebody. I don't know who. Georgia Bulldog, 2009. Uh. Joe Cox. Joe Cox. There we go. How, yeah. you like that? Yeah. How about that? I don't know if that's true. I saw it on Twitter. Feels so. like it, though. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and believe it. Yeah. We'll take a break here on the Odds Couple. We'll come back. We'll have our SEC predictions for the upcoming season and the Memphis Tigers, plus some picks for week one. Or, sorry, week zero. zero. Robin Lang with you here, the Odds Couple on Grind City Media. Heart Love Alive Tour. Ooh, Barracuda. And Joan Jett of the Blackhearts. I don't give a damn. And Nancy Wilson, Heart. Joan Jett of the Blackhearts. Friday, October 4th, FedEx Forum. Heart and Joan Jett of the Blackhearts together. Reserve seats on sale now at LiveNation.com. For the most up-to-date and exclusive coverage and analysis of the Memphis Grizzlies and more, visit GrindCityMedia.com. Grind City Media is always there, home and road, providing the most comprehensive Grizzlies and college football coverage. For more information and behind-the-scenes access on the Grizzlies, college football, and more, visit GrindCityMedia.com or follow them on Twitter, at GrindCityMedia. Seven-time Grammy winner Carrie Underwood is bringing her the Cry Pretty Tour 360 to FedEx Forum on October 23rd. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. By phone at 800-745-3000 or at the FedEx Forum box office. Carrie Underwood's The Cry Pretty Tour 360, October 23rd at FedEx Forum. Luke Bryan. Sunrise, sunburn, sunset. The Sunset Repeat Tour, October 10th at FedEx Forum. Luke Bryan, live with special guest Cole Swindell, John Langston, and DJ Rock. Get access to preferred seating with your city card. Buy tickets at LiveNation.com. Presented by Live Nation. Welcome back to The Odds Couple on GrindCityMedia.com. Live from FedEx Forum and the American Home Shield Studio, here's The Odds Couple. Rob Fisher and Lane Whitaker. Welcome back, everyone, to the Odds Couple. Fish and Lang with you here this afternoon. Getting you set for week zero. Florida and Miami also have Arizona, Hawaii. Excited about that one? Yeah. Yeah. Is June Jones back? That was no. Uh. But it is football to watch it's late anything, Saturday night. Man. This is yeah, this is the time of year when I say to myself, I'll watch any game, I don't care what it is, and then about week six, seven, I'll turn into some Boise State game at midnight on a Saturday, right. and I'm like, okay, I'm, I think I'm going to go to bed. Yeah, we'll have our picks for the week coming up uh, here in a few moments. But uh, Florida favored by 7.5. That total is 47. The Arizona-Hawaii game, the total is 74. So a little bit different type I of game. I might take the over on that one. 74 yeah. with uh, Arizona being favored by 11 points in that ball game. Uh, Alabama has been a pain for everyone in the SEC as everyone tries to reach Alabama and tries to beat him. All you have to do is ask Kirby Smart about that. Dogs have been really good the last couple of years, but Kirby says the dogs just have not been good enough. One of the themes our players have adopted this year has been to do more. It's a great theme because it's simple. We like it because we understand how close we've been to taking the next step. And although 24-5 and five the last two seasons is good, it's not good enough. 
It's not where we expect to be at the University of Georgia. Our mission is to bridge that gap. You know, by the actions we take, hence the word do more, those words require action. You know, and I heard a quote coming in here. I read a quote coming in this morning that really grabbed me, and I'm not a big quote guy, but when I heard this quote, I thought that that's something that our players can relate to. Life has no remote. You've got to get up and change it yourself. There you go. You know what does have a remote now? Your phone. Your <laughs> iPhone. You can do a remote. You can program it to be a remote. That's right. 20 and a half dogs over Vanderbilt in week, uh, week one. Actually, I'm not sold on that one. You, I you and I, yeah, I know you are. I've, we've talked about this. Like I, I'm worried about Georgia's offense at least week one, two, three, until they find who's the receiver that's going to carry them. I was playing NCAA 14, Lawrence Cager. You know who that is? No. Transfer from Miami, senior transfer, graduate transfer guy who's going to play right away. Uh, was one of the Hurricanes leading receivers last year, apparently. I don't know who he is either. He's leading receiver on the University of Georgia in, so far this season. So – is it going to be him, Demetrius Robinson, who came over from Cal last year and then couldn't get on the field? Like, I don't know who's going to be the guy for Georgia. Um, maybe Charlie Warner or somebody like that. But somebody's got to step up and be that receiver for for uh, Jake Fromm, and I don't know who that is. So Good news far. is they've always had a tight end step in. They always have, but they never have a wide receiver, right? Except AJ Green. Like, <laughs> right. we never have a guy like that. So hopefully this year somebody's the guy who can step up and be that guy. His his. his uh, Kirby's thing was do more. Yeah, Auburn today. I saw they tweeted their uh, their hashtag for the season is ride for the brand. Okay, how do you think about that? Ride for the brand. Yeah, they just changed their logo. Oh, it's very the, corporate. Uh, the AU now yeah, is now uh, different. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right, ride for the brand. Anyway, I feel like Georgia might have struggled to cover that twenty point five a little bit. Okay, well, we'll talk more about that one next week. But today we look at our preseason predictions. We both have Alabama. West, rather similar. Alabama, LSU at the top uh, with State, Ole Miss, and Arkansas at the bottom. Yeah. And uh, Auburn and A&M just flip-flopped on our two. But it's the East where we're a little different. I do have Florida winning the SEC East. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I think Georgia's <laughs> better than them. I mean, like we talked about earlier with Lance, um, you know, Felipe Franks has been awesome, and, and we've seen – Mullen kind of turned him around. I just I don't think that they're as good yet from one through twenty four, one through twenty six, whatever, as Georgia is. And I don't think they're ready to make that jump quite yet. Maybe a year or two down the line they're at that level, but um, I think you know. I, do you trust Felipe Franks? No, but I trust Dan Mullen more than well, I don't. He's trust not playing Felipe quarterbacks. <laughs> he's not going to be out there running right. around with the ball. You're right, but he did last year and he was great. I I mean. Our, our picks for Georgia and Florida are basically identical except for one game, yeah. and it's when they play each other. Yeah. And, and I have Florida winning that game. Again, I, I think when you look at that, that sort of rivalry game, anything can happen. So yeah. I'm going with Florida, but it wouldn't shock me if Georgia, Georgia – I mean, you got two third-year quarterbacks going against each other, and I'll take from in Yeah, one. and one's great and yeah. the other one's not. Uh, Memphis Tigers, you got them 10-2, 7-1 and two, seven and one in the conference. I got them 9-3, and 6-2 and two yeah. in the conference. I. I have them losing the first game to Ole Miss, and then I think there are three, four games you can look at in the schedule where you just say they could lose those two. I wouldn't be direct on which two, but between <laughs> Navy, Tulsa, Houston, yeah. Cincinnati, lose two of those. I think so, too. I mean, there's going to be one game where the weather is going to play a part. We don't know which game it'll be, but every year that seems to happen to Memphis where it rains or something crazy happens yes. and something wacky messes them up. I think they're going to lose to Ole Miss also, but – you know what? The last like two weeks, I've become more and more sold on Memphis being able to win that game. I'm not sure. I still think Ole Miss is probably got too much talent. Um, I would take Mike Norvell over Matt Luke in a coaching battle, but I think that Ole Miss is probably just too talented for for Memphis to be able to pull that thing off. Memphis currently favored by six uh, for that ball yeah. game. We'll talk more about that one coming out next week. But for our picks this week, well, we both picked the one game: Florida and Miami. And uh, we're both going with the Florida Gators, minus the seven and a half. And then we each went with a couple of overs, a couple of unders. I got UT over six and a half, Kentucky under six and a half. One of my overs, Texas A&M, you have A&M under. Yeah, I That mean, team that could be anywhere from nine to six, I got them over, you got them under. To me, that schedule is just so tough. And I don't, I, I don't trust Jimbo enough. I don't know if Kellen Mond's good enough to get them over that. I mean, that seven and a half isn't an unthinkable number for them. Except that schedule. I mean, yeah. they play – just look at who they play against. I mean, they Clemson week two, Auburn week four, 
Um, and then down the stretch, the last two games at Georgia, at LSU, back-to-back. Um, Four games, as Lance pointed out, they're a significant dog. Yeah, I, I just feel like and if, if you're trying to win eight games – if with four being a significant dog, like that's tough, yeah. and I, I, I'll take the under on them. Yeah, one that I have that you know some people might snicker at. I have Memphis under the nine and a half. Now I did have them winning. <laughs> I'll snicker. <laughs> I had them winning nine games, but my thing with Memphis is, I mean, look at that team last year. I think last year's team was better. I mean, how could it not be? You just lost a lot of starts on your offensive line. Yeah. You lost two of the best running backs yep. that the program's ever had. Your defense was awful. I mean, I guess the defense is expected to be better this year. You have a quarterback who's Okay, good. He should be better, right? Between okay and good. He gets another year with Norvell. Like I, I guess, but I, feel like but the I think you lost be... too much. And weather's been problems. Yeah. Navy's been problems. Houston, Cincinnati can be a problem. I just think there are too many problems that are out there, too many stumbling blocks that, that'll keep them from winning. I, I think a really good season, a 9-3 and three and 6-2, and two, and it might be enough to win the division. I mean, yeah, they lose um, Pollard and Henderson, but, you know, Patrick Taylor had 1,100 yards yep. as the backup. He steps into that role. Brady gets another year with Norvell. And like you said, the defense was pretty bad last year. Like, can they be worse? I don't think it could be worse. I mean, it, Those are that's famous the last thing. words. Yeah, it's the thing that you always hear every year. Well, they do get everybody back. Well, is that good or is that bad? I think it's good. I, I, <laughs> I feel like – and they don't have to play UCF this year that's in the true. regular season. So I feel like things are turning the right way for them this season. You, uh, you don't like Arkansas this year. No, I mean, who does? Do you like them? <laughs> no. I don't even think Jerry Jones would take the over on them this year. <laughs> They're going to be a bad spot this year. It's hard to find a win yeah. in the SEC again. When you're that. a bad team in the SEC, like that's a long season. Yeah, and it's, and it's hard to find your way out of that hole, and it's going to be hard for I ran again. into somebody the other day at the grocery store who was talking to the, the clerk and said that they were going to cheer for UGA this year. And I said, oh, go dogs!" And she was like, well, I'm actually an Arkansas fan, but <laughs> this year it might not be fun to, to be an Arkansas <laughs> so, fan. So, change in allegiance. Yeah. yeah there's I, nothing wrong with that. There might be a lot of that this year. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our first edition here of The Odds Couple. And uh, when we come back next week, we'll have results and we'll have a lot more games to talk about as well. So, looking forward to that as we'll be handicapping the games all season long here on The Odds Couple. Lance Taylor will be joining us week in and week out. We'll be talking about the games with him, previewing the games, handicapping the games with him. We'll have our picks each and every week. And if we're lucky enough, as he said, Vinny Verno uh, will be joining us. I don't know if we'll see him again. We, <laughs> he, might, he might be gone. Not after he hurt his hand today. True. He might have gone straight to the ER. Yeah, that was a little disappointing. So that's going to do it for us. Thank you for joining us here on our first edition here on The Odds Couple. want to thank Kimball. want to thank Roser. Thank you, Lang. I'm Fish. Have yourself a great weekend, and I hope your bets are all winners. You've been listening to The Odds Couple from the American Home Shield Studio on GrindCityMedia.com. Tune in next week for more football handicapping with Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker.